looking back from where I came from to where I am now is just two ends of the spectrum. It really is a testament to the hard work I put in. Taylor Battle, born September 16th, 1988. Today's feature is one of the greatest examples of the difference in levels and how difficult it is to actually make the NBA. I say that because Taylor Battle was one of the best players at his position in high school, came into his Division I program and immediately started nearly every game he played in and from his sophomore year, rarely came out the game because he was that important to his team. He improved each of his four years from 10 points per game to over 20 points per game in that span and had the same improvement as a shooter, eventually finishing with a 36% accuracy from deep, better than average and it helped him track down and still hold the record for all time total points in a career for the Penn State basketball program. Up to that point, Taylor Battle did everything asked of him on the amateur level and you would think in the end that has to lead to a seamless transition to the NBA where the best of the best are supposed to be harbored and where the best not in the league are welcomed in with lottery pick or first round opened arms. After leaving school in 2011 as arguably the best Nittany Lion to ever put on the jersey, he embarked on a solid overseas journey that went from France to Israel to Tel Aviv ending in 2018. He was listed at 6 foot but in my opinion closer to 5'9 as for some reason media guides always give the 6 foot nod to any good guard that doesn't quite add up in inches. I met Chris Paul, he's not 6 foot either. Nevertheless, what I respected about Battle most was he understood his lack of size and made up for it with savvy ways to get his shot off among the trees and had the confidence to lead a basketball program literally since day one. As a freshman, he was vocally unafraid to be the emotional backbone for Penn State and by the next season, he was named one of the team's captains, joining all other seniors selected to lead. You could also tell he was a smart kid off the floor and understood the ins and outs of his craft by the way he spoke ever since high school with a bright future because of him possessing gifts to be special in other areas of life. He sat watching the draft with his family and 60 players were taken that night, none of them named Taylor Battle and some toward the end were only taken so teams could have their rights in case they develop into something interesting. Six of those players never played a game in the league, stashed overseas collecting checks. He was expected to come in and maybe have close to the success he had in high school or in college, but he didn't pass the eye test and for these reasons, his growth was stunted. What happened? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Taylor Battle was a listed six-foot point guard from Albany, New York that grew up in a basketball household and throughout his high school career, competed against Jimmer Fredette for the best guard in the state. The two would share that award as seniors capping off an illustrious career for Battle where he averaged 29 points, 6 assists and 5 rebounds his senior year, adding another 4 steals on his way to being named the local player of the year with Fredette. He became the fifth all-time leading scorer in New York Section 2 history. He committed to Penn State to have a chance to impact a team early on, help them to the NCAA tournament which they hadn't been in six years before Battle got there, and play often to help his NBA chances. Three of his four seasons, Battle played just about every minute of the game and by his junior year, had the chance to leave early for the NBA. He came back a final year, graduated, and solidified himself as one of the best of all time for the program. Stunt number one, the illusion of college. The one issue I have with the system of amateur players being considered NBA draft prospects is it doesn't always work how they tell you it's supposed to. You'd think, since they ask you to attend college or at least be one year removed, if you stand out in college, you should be able to smoothly make the transition to the NBA, but then you see a guy like Taylor Battle go undrafted after the all-time program leading four-year career he had, and it gets confusing. Until you understand that, well, one, nothing is promised, and two, what they don't tell you and many players go through college not knowing is it really doesn't matter what you do in college once at the right time you meet a certain standard a team is looking for in the league. 
You can average 12 points a game like Jordan Poole and be a first round selection after only two years. 16 points per game like Paul George or even 10 points per game like Devin Booker and still be a lottery selection, even go on to become all-stars acquiring huge contracts and be known as some of the best of their era, possibly even Hall of Fame. Tyrese Halliburton currently is seen as a top three point guard in the NBA right now and his college numbers are modest compared to Taylor Battle. But the difference with the players mentioned and battle is they had all the skills or natural gifts that translate to the NBA and Taylor pretty much didn't have any. Going into college, you get to choose the school you want to go to. In the NBA, it's the exact opposite. I wouldn't say it's easy to, but more than likely a good high school player chooses a school he can come in and have significant impact right away as the program is tailor made for their skills to shine brightest. Taylor Battle did a great job selecting Penn State as instantly he became their most valuable player playing 36 minutes per game on average over his four years. At a school once again tailored to you and 36 minutes per game basically never coming out the game, most average players can look great under those circumstances. But during that time the team didn't win much, only making the NCAA tournament in his senior year and losing in the first round. In that time, he hadn't focused on a skill that could translate to the NBA at his size, like being a better assist man or a defender. Scoring a lot at 5'9 is the last thing an NBA team is likely to ask a young draft pick to do. But that's what Taylor Battle did best in college. His numbers look and sound great, but when you look past the illusion, you see that nothing jumps off the page about Battle's potential NBA talent. Stun number two, size first game style. The main reason Taylor Battle was overlooked was because of how small he actually was when seen during the draft process and workouts. That mixed with the way he plays at that size made it difficult for a team to see the upside. Let's go with Battle was actually six foot. He doesn't play like the typical small guy that would get an opportunity in the NBA. Chris Paul is a tremendous passer, leader, high IQ, fast, quick and just has the ability to make his teammates play above their level. Iverson was a talented scorer, one of the best ever in that area, athletic, fearless and had a charisma about him we never seen before or after where no one ever says I hated Allen Iverson. Hall of Fame level scorer. These are a few examples of what you need to be if you're six foot and under and close to either one. Battle was small, but he wasn't exactly quick or fast or jumped out the gym. He played like he was 6'5", and in college he was allowed to because most of the plays ran through him. On the NBA level, he's a huge liability on defense and offense because he was a good shooter, not great, very small body, didn't play high level defense like a Jose Alvarado and didn't get his team involved enough averaging 20 points per game as a senior but just to assist. He needed a Penn State where he had so much opportunity but on the NBA level with all good to great players on the team, what else could he offer that someone else couldn't? The answer was not much and he went undrafted. Stun number three, not passing the eye test. In the end, Taylor Battle still had a great high school and college career, so a good chance he would at least get the opportunity to be seen at the combine and during private team workouts and be able to prove himself there, gaining interest from a team. But even after those workouts and teams getting to read his measurables on paper and see the skills he has that may translate to the NBA, no team saw NBA talent. Mike DeCourcy, the Sporting News college basketball senior writer said just as much. Even went as far as to say when he saw him himself in person, he didn't see a clear cut NBA player stand out among the rest. I completely understand that. Battle looked great in a program selected carefully by himself and family and was lucky enough to have a coach who loved his game and played him heavy minutes. But again, fit in college doesn't mean fit in the NBA. His size, game style and lack of translational skills were seen as a problem and teams passed on him because of it. 
He didn't make his team better in results either, averaging 3.9 assists per game in four years, but having two out of four losing seasons in college and only making the NCAA tournament one time. They did win the NIT his sophomore year, but that obviously wasn't enough. All in all, Taylor Battles still became a professional overseas and had a solid pro career for seven years before becoming a coach first at Penn State, now at Northwestern as an assistant where his other life skills can shine through now that basketball is done. He was a great amateur player, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.